Hello and welcome back to Cisco Knowledge Base. This is Zach from Cloud Support Team. Today we will be covering a new topic, um, although it's fairly new, but there are some questions around that will be helpful to cover in this short video, Knowledge Base. This is two steps to configure CTA, which is a Cognitive Threat Analytics with the web security appliance and a third party proxy servers, uh, essentially for the log analysis. So why CTA? So in today's world, there is a lot of malware, a lot of threats on the web access is out there that we would like to save our environment from those threats and malwares. So essentially, CTA, it combines with the proper data analytics and integration with essentially leverage the thread grid, which is the current relevant data in the infrastructure being deployed or advanced malware protection. With the CTA, you can uncover the newest part of the command control, and it gives you as the administrator a good picture what particular groups or attackers are utilized and what they are after. <clears throat> In addition, we can precisely give the administrator a picture of real time path, the file names, endpoints, and what are the probabilities for individual artifacts just to secure the environment. So, first we'll look at the current supported architecture. The first one is to architecture for CWS and CTA, where the logs from the CWS accounts been pushed to CTA portal and it generates the reports. And again, we'll do the demo, a walkthrough, how to configure that. So CWS customers today, that happens automatically, no additional configuration required. But for web security appliance, it will require some additional configuration, which will uh, demo it. The second diagram it shows the architecture of the web security appliance in the CTA or any third party proxy server, such as a blue coat here. We can log into standalone portal and configure it to via SCP and a secure shell. So integration, option for WSA in CTA, essentially it could be a connector mode or CWS tower accounts that initiates a connection for the CTA portal right from the CWS portal. And then second one is for the WSA directly communicating with the CTA standalone portal. So just a couple of caveats there. The WSA connector is a feature of CWS and can be used only with the CWS services. And it's provided for free, the connector mode, including the license. And then web security log analysis does not require CWS license. So this is just an FYI, how this being architectured. So, if someone would ask a question, the difference between CWS portal versus a standalone CTA portal, so as I mentioned earlier, we can initiate a connection to CTA portal from the CWS portal, or we can access standalone. And, and again, we'll show that in demo. So CTA was integrated using the framework embedded with the CWS portal and that's how it redirects you and a seamless transition from CWS portal for administrators. So some of the functionality is not available in a standalone as you will see coming from the CWS portal. So there's a couple of more caveats that need to know. Details. So how do we access CTA portal currently from CWS? There is a threat tab 
that allow you once you log in from the scancenter.scansafe.com portal page. Or conversely, we can log into our standalone CTA portal. This is the, the URL shows on the, on the page. Just a couple of more points. Customer that have both CWS and WSA can order CTA separately to produce dedicated threat report. Or we can set up a secondary set of WSA in a connector mode. So as we said, for CWS customer, WSA is available in connector mode and that's free of charge. So the currently supported on CTA portal receiving a proxy log on WSA blue code at the same time. So if, if the customer environments and they have several solutions for the proxy servers and that come that becomes a useful a single pan of solution where you can have all your data gathered and reported generated in a single web portal. So I have to jump around just because different hardware. So then we will look at the what I have done is I put them in a different part. So we'll configure a CTA for standalone web security appliance. In this case we use WSA. We'll configure it. The first part is to configure and add the device into the CTA portal. It walks you through through the wizard and we use SCP for communication, SSH key, device ID, make sure the ports, etc. Again, we'll walk through it so we add some more clarity to it. In part two, the other side of the frame that we need to have configure web security appliance to successfully talk to CTA portal with the directory structure, SSH key port, and the directory where this is going to be logs will be pushed to in order to determine threats. Remember, the access log in the web security appliance where all the client data is stored and it's a continuation base. So that's why it makes it very, very useful. So we can either spin a new access log and name it appropriately C CTA logs, CTA portal logs, or we can have our default access log can point over there. So either way. So this is just a screenshot. How do you configure SCP on web security appliance and we'll do a live demo and the key configuration once it's complete there is a verification we walk through it to make sure the device has been added to the CTA portal for continuation log analysis there's an activity log also perform uh, we'll show that as well so then we'll review it so we'll go tap the page so we'll start from here where just to show the difference between the portals. So here as I log into our Scan Center account, as I said before, the threat tab, it takes you to the CTA account. In here, Currently, it shows um, that's the ideal that we don't want to see any threats. But just since we just added a couple of devices, uh, and that's why we don't see much. But if you do look at the a demo account, which I will show you in a quick, so this is a standalone. So that's where you come in if you log in as a standalone. So these were the two methods. One is to coming from the CWS portal using the threat tab. The other one, other one is coming in as a CTA standalone portal. I will come back to it for some of the data. So let's follow the notes here. So the part one, 
In order to configure and add a device, we'll go to the Thread tab. We're going to initiate from. So let's go back. So we're logged into our scans. We're going to try method one, which is log into the Scan Center account. And then we'll click on the Thread tab. Then we'll come back to the menu. We we'll say Device Account. These were the devices were recently added. We can take a look at it. Uh, if you expand all, how much logs been pushed, how much data has been pushed. But since it was a very recent, so there's not much activity. We'll collapse all. To add a device, we'll say add device count. And in this case, we're using our web security appliance. So we'll say SCP. We'll call it uh, 14 WSA demo. Add account. Now here's the part when you generate these. This is the SCP host, the directory, and the username. This is the information that need to go into web security appliance. So we'll take that. And I do have a web security appliance that is this is um, a hybrid mode, but it essentially really doesn't matter. It could be standard proxy mode, hybrid mode, or a connector mode. And this is running on a hybrid build. We'll go under system administration, log subscription. And here's the access log. I can either add a log subscription or access log and call this CTA or I can just use the current access log so it depends on the policy right and we'll come down and SCP so that's where the host would go and then we have the directory Also the username, this is the random generation of the username with the algorithm that in place on the portal. That's to make it secure communication. Okay. So once we submit this, it will give you an SSH key right here and that key need to go back in order to complete this and we'll say finish so as you see right away you're gonna see our demo box account creation in progress provisioning but we still have a couple more clicks to do we want to make sure we commit this change what we just added so once this is completed it should become a ready status so if you look at it quickly what we have done is we use these steps add device we use the SCP we added this SSH key we jumped over to web security appliance access log configure access log and pasted the SSH key back here and then we are waiting on provisioning to be completed once it's done we'll verify it so uh, we'll wait this guy to get completed here how would you verify it let's see if you look at the couple of boxes here so we can look at in a couple of ways if the data start populating it will say when these logs been updated and how long it took to update it and then we'll look at the activity logs this one doesn't look very good 
Let's go back and take a look at another one. And on this machine, some of these boxes are, law, are the lab devices, so you're constantly experimenting. So this one was uploaded, start and start. That's what it will show if it's working. If it's not working, you will see some of the errors that we saw previously, and you can need to look at the ports and etc. Okay. So as we see, as soon as um, this provisioning is completed, it shows some activity, and I see one minute forty six second ago data and the status is ready. Now one thing I want to show since this is a brand new setup so it doesn't have much activity as far as the bad stuff and that's why we don't see um, threats. Right? Everything is zero. But here's the one that I want to show you through the demo. Okay. So if you go, and hopefully the environment doesn't look that bad, but this is a demo box. So if you look at the how many critical, how many high risk, medium, then we can drill down to it and we can take a look at it and take some action. It also gives you the IP address and other details with it. This is all just three minutes ago, five minutes ago, we can also look at some other details as to what's happening on device level. So these are all the devices. That's, this is again, it's the demo, so but kind of gives you a good insight what would be look like. And then you can drill down to each thread and take a look at it, what's going on, what's what's a recommendation, what needs to happen, and take an action on it. And this is a detected. So this is just a demo to show. Now, let's go back to our notes here. So that was the activity log we saw uh, and rest of it. So let's quickly review this quickly. So there was in need, there were some questions around, so there was in need to have put this knowledge base to the steps to configure for CTA on WSA or, or third party such as uh, web cache. Why we do CTA? Um, in summary, we want to precisely know what our endpoints are doing and also the file names, the paths to articulate and control the environment from the malware and threats. These are the architecture for CWS and WSA is supported. Connector mode is also supported. And these are the steps we can access from the CWS portal under Threat tab, or we can go log into CTA standalone. Couple of caveats to know. As far as the configuration, how do you integrate web security appliance into the CTA portal? Walk through it, device account, SCP, give it device name, new configuration device, conf and complete the SCP key, SSS, SSH key rather. And then second part is configuring SCP host and other entry as we saw on a web security appliance. Once this is done, you can look at the activity log. It goes should go from provisioning to ready, a green. And that should cover this topic. Once again, thank you so much for your time. And hopefully you'll find this useful. Have a great day, great afternoon, and great evening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.